Hey, what's up coders? Welcome to One Little Coder. In this applied NLP tutorial, we are going to look at a new string fuzzy matching library called Rapid Fuzz. Rapid Fuzz is a fuzzy matching library. It's a very good alternative for fuzzy wuzzy. If you go to the GitHub repository, the developer Max Bachman, thanks to Max Bachman, we have a list of advantages of Rapid Fuzzy over fuzzy wuzzy. The first advantage is it is MIT license, which means you can use it even if you have got a commercial product. On the other hand, if you are using fuzzy wuzzy, it has got GPL license, which means you wouldn't be able to use it for a, a lot of commercial purposes if you wanted. And the other thing is rapid fuzz, rapid fuzz also gives you other string metrics, distance metrics like Hamming and Jaro Wickler, which are not included in fuzzy wuzzy. And the, the third advantage of using rapid fuzz over fuzzy wuzzy is that it is mostly written in C++, which means you're going to have much um, faster processing time than fuzzy wuzzy and then you know like it's 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 up to individual choice like you can you can always try out different libraries and that's that's how we are going to try out rapid first today so let's get started with rapid first i've got a google collab notebook as you can see i've got a google collab notebook which would be linked in the youtube description so all you have to do is go to the youtube description expand it click the google collab notebook you'll be able to access all the code that you see here on the screen in this tutorial the first step is to install rapid first so first thing we have done is installing rapid first i've installed it quietly so that's why you don't see a lot of text here after you install rapid first there are a lot of different ways for us to do the fuzzy matching so i'm going to show you a lot of different ways and at the end of this tutorial we're going to take a pandas data frame and we are going to do fuzzy matching for the pandas data frame the first step is from rapid first i can import fuzz okay so after you import first, you can now try to calculate the simple distance between two text that you give to string that you give. So first dot ratio, you can either do like this or you can even import rap, import rapid first dot first. So you it's up to you. However you want to do, you can do it. So after I import rapid first, like first from rapid first, now I'm going to use fuzz dot ratio to calculate the distance between two string. So this is a common issue. If you have ever worked with a data set in India, let it be survey data set, let it be POS point of sale data set, you would always see somebody somewhere else misspelling New Delhi. So in one case, people use it with space. In the other case, people use it without space. And it's, it's always a concern. It's always a matter of concern to bring single source of truth. So if you're not familiar with fuzzy matching at all, so fuzzy matching is an approach in um, NLP or text analytics, string manipulation, whatever you would like to call information theory, where you have two different set of string which do not match exactly. Imagine their key, but they are similar. You know they are similar. It could be an address, it could be a city name, it could be a product name, it could be a medicine name, it could be anything. They're same, but somebody has made a mistake in the spelling which means you are not able to match it exactly as you would like to do in, in your typical, you know, SQL joins or anything. That's why fuzzy matching is usually used. And here we are looking at a fuzzy matching between two words, which is quite commonly misspelled or differently spelled in India, which is New Delhi, the capital of India, also New Delhi without any space. So if I use fuzz dot ratio and then say New Delhi, and then I say New Delhi, you can see that it gives me a score of 94, which means it's closer. For example, I can give you a different perspective to say New Delhi and Mumbai. And then when I run this, you would see that the score is quite less because primarily these two words are not similar. These two strings are not similar. So this is the easiest way, the most, um, you know, the, like, the simplest way for you to use rapid fuzz. But now we are going to start building on top of it. Well, for example, let's say you've got string. Right, you've got a string and you know that somewhere in the string the words or letters are jumbled right the tokens are jumbled so now imagine this is your string and then this is your token now you know that somewhere in your string that you have got uh, the words the tokens are jumbled for example united states of america and then united america of states like you've got two different string but the words are jumbled but but you know these two are same you you want it to be same so if you simply use rapid fuzz ratio you know what you get you get a score of about 62 but you know this is not ideal um, because rapid fuzz it looks at uh, every character alone but you know the the wh what has changed here is the token the word itself not the characters so what you want to do is 
you want to use a different function which is called token underscore sort underscore ratio token sort ratio so this function is something that you would use when the words the tokens inside your string is jumbled across as it's sorted so now when i use this for united states of america and then united america of states i don't know if that's a thing then when i press enter you can see i've got 100 percent score so the score that you are getting here is a normalized levenstein score we are going to see what is the difference between these two but just for now imagine this is a normalized levenstein score this goes between 0 to 100 if there is an exact match you get 100 if there is no match at all you get zero that's how the score moves so now if a word is jumbled if the word is moved across you know how to use it so first we learned about ratio second we learned about token sort ratio there are a lot of different ways you can do this thing further but i'm going to move on to a different method where to say how can you change your distance metric so we're going to now learn how can we use different distance metrics so we are going to use two examples here the first example that we are going to use is a levenstein distance the second example that we are going to use is a normalized levenstein distance the normalized levenstein distance is nothing but take the levenstein distance normalize it in such a way that it scores between 0 to 100 so let's look at the example that we were looking at so we have got new delhi and then we have got delhi and i'm importing this unlike this so here it came from first dot ratio but here i'm importing it from string metric so the distance metrics are stored inside string metric so i'm going to say from rapid first dot string metric import levenstein and normalize levenstein and after i do that i'm going to use levenstein as a function and then say what give, give me the distance between new delhi and delhi and then you can see the distance is four if i give this without space you can see the distance is one so if i say news delhi and then you can again start saying the difference because the difference is one you can see the position and difference but you know a lot of times you do not want to see distance like this you might want to see it as a range between zero to 100 because you know we all love index right we we, we would like to like you can you can go back to your team and then you can say you know there is a 90 percent chance that these two are same so for you to have that normalized metric there is a different function called normalized levenstein so which you can use and then say okay there is a 55 percent chance because that's a distance but you are you're kind of translating it in the business english language that you can use to communicate to your stakeholder so you can say there is a 55 percent chance or there is a 55 percent similarity between these two words which is new delhi and delhi that is normalized levenstein so you have got levenstein and then you've got normalized levenstein so these two are important things for you to know the other distance metric that you discussed here like we discussed here for example hamming and jarrow winkler all those things you can import it like this how you imported levenstein so that is good at this point now what if you want to add one extra variable or argument that says if a particular word uh, sorry particular character is inserted or deleted or substituted so by default if a string if a character is inserted or deleted or substituted the weights are one 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 it's a tuple the argument takes a tuple by default if anything is inserted anything is deleted anything is substituted it is all one 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 but what if you want to change the weight what if you want to say okay i want to increase the weight of the distance when something is inserted or i want to increase the weight when something is deleted for example by default when you compare string and strings what do you get you get one as a value because like let me remove this and run run this so you can see that by default you get one why do you get one because by default the weight is one 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 so i've included one so you got one like if you do not have anything let me let me run this when you don't have anything it's same that's why you have got zero so when you when you have a smaller change like when you have a change in only one character you say one 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 by default so you get the score of one but what if you want to penalize insertion more so i can say two and now what happens is when something is inserted you get two for example if i said two like if i insert twice ideally you would have got two as a score but you're penalizing it twice your weight is twice for insertion so you're getting four so this is another thing that you can do so you can play with how do you want to weight these three operations either insertion deletion substitution these are the three possible combination of things that can happen to a given string so you want to calibrate those things like that's that's another option that the developer has given you can simply use the argument weights and then you can calibrate your weights you can give the weights for these three operations in the same order as a tuple 
So for example, I don't want to give 10, 2, I want to give 10. So I can give 10 and then say your score is going to be 20 because you have got two insertions. So that's, that's exactly how it works. And that is a, an argument within your distance metric. So you, whether you are using Levenstein, whether you're using normalized Levenstein, whatever you're using, you can use this for uh, for calibrating your weights, changing your weights rather than having, having a normal 1, 1, 1, you can change the weight that you want. This is all well and good until now. But you know, all these examples that we discussed until now, you would have noticed a pattern where we have taken simply two strings and we try to compare. But if you are somebody who works in data science, you might be idly wondering, you know what, what is this guy talking about? Is this rubbish? Like, because we don't compare two strings all the time. Maybe we have got data in a pandas data frame. That's what I want to compare. I don't want to compare two strings, but I want to take a column in a pandas data frame, maybe compare it with something else. I hear you. If that is what you wanted, the way you do it is quite different. So we are going to use a module called process module within rapid fuzz. We're going to use process module in rapid fuzz and do the same thing. Before that, I want to create a pandas data frame and I want to show you. So I've got a pandas data frame that goes like this. It has got a column called place. It has got a column called index. So now place goes Orissa and then place goes Odisha. So if, if you are in India, you would know that Indians love to change the name of the places for a lot of variety of reasons. So it used to be called Orissa, now it's called Odisha. Okay. So now Bangalore is, it used to be called Bangalore, now it's called Bengaluru. So even though Bangalore and Bengaluru are not equal matches, but still they are closer than Mumbai, right? So I've got a data frame that looks like this. Now what we are going to do right now is we are going to learn how to use rapid fuzz in this data set and what all things that we can get. So our first column place has got Orissa, Odisha, Mumbai, Bangalore, Bengaluru. So this is what we have got. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to first import from rapid fuzz dot process. Like I said, we are going to deal with the new module called process. And from that, we're importing extract one, extract, extract iter. I'm going to give you the difference between these. Next. We want to import the distance metrics, the string metric, Levenstein distance and normalized Levenstein. If you do not worry about distance metric a lot, you don't have to import this. But if you want to change the distance metric, then you need this. And finally, if you simply want to calculate ratio, what we did at the start, you can import rapid first dot, like rapid first dot first import ratio. This is, and I don't, I don't think I want to show you this, um, but if you want to simply compare to string, um, even like, uh, a data frame with a string, you can simply use this if you don't want a lot of customization. The first thing that I'm going to show you is, I'm going to show you a function called extract, right? Extract of your, your string that you want to compare. What do I want to compare? I want to compare Orissa with the df dot place, right? I'm going to do this. You can see when I do this, you can see at this point, Orissa is the string that I want to take and compare against all the existing values in the df dot place. And you can see Odisha has matched 100, Odisha has matched 83, Bangalore has matched 40, sorry, Bangalore has matched 40, Bengaluru has matched 22, and then you get Mumbai. So you get both the scores, you get normalized Levenstein, and you get Levenstein scores. So you, you basically got two scores, now you can, you can compare. So this is what extract does, extract as the name simply suggests, you get to extract all the values simply, right? You, you just simply got it. This is extract. Now, let's say you don't want to extract everything. You want to extract the most appropriate answer. Like for example, if you're using Orisa, is, 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 your, um, is your value, what, what is the most appropriate answer? Your highest score is Orisa, right? Let's say we're going to say Odrisa something, okay? Now, your highest appropriate value is 93, this one, right? So now I can use extract one. I can say extract one and I can give the same arguments, right? I can give the same arguments and then it's going to return me only one. So imagine like you want to suggest something new to your customer. You've got a web interface. You want to suggest only one thing to your customer or you're doing it for internal purpose, whatever. But you want only one result. You don't want to take the pain of you know, going through all the result and finding the maximum. You don't want to do all those things. All you want is give me one result that matches the closest. That's it. This is a function. You get extract one. You have extract and you have extract one. But you know, sometimes you want to iterate on it. Like sometimes you want, you don't want a list of a tuple. Rather, you want a generator. You want an iterator 
that you can use to iterate on. For example, if I have got these values and I want to iterate on, then instead of using extract, I'm going to use extract iter, extract underscore iter, and I can say the place name and I can say the place and I can get the value as well. So the only difference or only change that I've done here is instead of like, maybe I can show you the first thing, right? I can show you this. It's going to give me everything and the score. Like I've got Orissa, I've got Odisha, I've got Mumbai, I've got Bangalore, I've got Bengaluru and the scores you can see 40, 22, 45, 166. Now, after I do this thing, you know, I've got, I've got a thought. I've, I'm like, you know, maybe I don't want to see anything where score is lesser than 50. I want to see only the items where the score is greater than 50. So I can use a score cutoff, same score cutoff, and I can give a 50. So what I'm trying to propose is I'm saying that if my score, if my similarity score is greater than 50, which means let's say I've got 50% chance that these two are similar, then give me only those. Now I can do that and I can get it. So inside this function, inside this function, I can give an argument then score cutoff, just like how we did weights, just like how we can change the scores, the scorer, like just like that, you can give another argument that says score cutoff and then you can give a cutoff value and then you get the result. That's it. So you've, you've managed to get the list, right? Now you can, you can iterate on it. You can do whatever you want. Option one, option two, you just want one value. Give me the maximum, the closest match extract one. Three, you know, you know what? I'll, I'll deal with all these things. Give me an iterator. I don't want a string. I don't want a list. Just give me an iterator. I'll manage all these things. And you can get an iterator using extract underscore iter. And you can now use this with distant, different distance metric. And you can change all these things. And you can, you can manage to build a really, really sophisticated fuzzy matching algorithm for the single source of truth in your organization. That's highly, highly computationally efficient because it uses C++. Of course, we all know um, how good a C++ library could be. So that, that's rapid first. If you like this, like this library, please go ahead and then give a shout out to this developer. Also, Max Bachman is, um, is um, you know, uh, you can sponsor Max Bachman. So if you are using this for a commercial purpose in your organization, if you support GitHub, GitHub repositories, I would strongly encourage you to go support the developer. And if you would like to give me some feedback on this video, I've, I've changed a lot of audio things. So I'm trying a lot of different things for this video. So if you found this audio quality to be better, um, anything from my, any of the previous videos, please let me know in the comment section. It could, it could mean a lot. Share it with your friends. I hope you found this video helpful. Like I said, this code would be available in the YouTube description for you to check it out. Otherwise, stay safe. Take care. Happy coding. Peace.